it is actually easy to see that the forward reaction is endothermic. The energy of the products is greater than the energy of the reactants. So the answer to 5.1.1, our reaction is endothermic. 5.1.2, calculate the heat of reaction for the forward reaction. So what is the heat of reaction or the enthalpy change? Is the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. Let's look at the energy of the products first. Our products have an energy of 420 kilojoules per mole, while the reactants start with an energy of 0 kilojoules per mole. So our enthalpy change will be 420 minus 0, which is just equal to 420 kilojoules per mole. That is the answer to 5.1.2. Looking at 5.1.3, write down the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Now we are interested in the activation energy for the reverse reaction. So the activation energy for the reverse reaction will be this energy here at peak, which is 480 kilojoules per mole, minus the potential energy of our reactants. For the reverse reaction, that will be 420 kilojoules per mole so we have the activation energy being equals to 480 minus 420 which is equals to 60 kilojoules per mole right that is the answer to 5.1.3 let's look at 5.2 the following graph represents the number of particles against a specific amount of kinetic energy of the molecules. The data for samples R and S was obtained at different temperatures, which affects the rate of reaction. There we have a graph uh, for R and S. We have the number of particles on the y-axis and the kinetic energy of the particles on the x-axis. The first question, 5.2.1, is asking us to define the term rate of reaction that is the change in concentration of the reactants or product per unit time it is actually that easy 5.2.2 what does the area to the right of line t represent let's go to our graph and see what we have we have a line t there so what does this area to the right of line t represent you should know by now that that area there represents the number of particles so that is the number of particles with a kinetic energy that is equals to or greater than the activation energy the number of particles with sufficient energy that is 5.2.2 moving to 5.2.3 which sample was at a higher temperature write down only sample r or sample s so we know that when temperature is increased more particles will have sufficient kinetic energy so the graph that has a lot of particles with sufficient kinetic energy was obtained when the temperature was increased if you look at r the number of particles with sufficient kinetic energy is given by this graph here but if you look at s instead you will realize that not only is it given by that graph for r but even uh, this portion right here so we can conclude from that and say that uh, the answer to 5.2.3 is actually simple as another way of seeing it is that when temperature is increased the peak is gonna go down and it is gonna shift to the right just like what happens with s let's move to 5.2.4 5.2.4 explain the answer to question 5.2.3 by using the collision theory so we know fully well that when the temperature is increased the particles will gain kinetic energy the average kinetic energy of the particles is going to increase and then more particles will have sufficient kinetic energy that is the kinetic energy that is equal to you or greater than the activation energy so the area under the graph to the right of line t should increase just like we saw with simple s 
5.3 in 5.3 the question is saying that 11 grams of magnesium ribbon reacts with a 0.25 moles per decimeter cube of hydrochloric acid solution at a temperature of 25 degrees celsius according to the following balanced reaction there we have it uh, a table of the results is given below the first question use the graph paper that is printed on the last page of the question paper and plot a graph for this result so even though we don't have a graph paper let's see what we can do here so we have our y-axis and we have our um, x-axis uh, on our x-axis we're gonna have the time obviously so let's have an interval of one so we're gonna have one two three and then on the x-axis uh that is time in in seconds and then on the y-axis we have uh, the volume we have the volume in centimeter cube right and then we have 0 to 35 so let's move with an interval of 10. so let's say one two three four those four blocks will give us 10. so we have 10 and then one two three four let's have 20 one two three four let's have 30 and then one two let's say that is 35. right so our first coordinate we have zero and zero so let's just put a bullet point here and then we have 0 0.5 and 17 so 0 0.5 and 17 somewhere here we have another bullet point right there 1 and 25 so we have 1 and 25 somewhere here 1.5 and 30 so midway between 1 and 2 and 30 so something like that and then 33 and 2 so 33 and 2 35 and 2.5 35 and 2.5 and again um 3 and 35 we should have something like that 5.3.2 Use the graph paper and explain what happened with the reaction between two minutes and three minutes. So let's go ahead and look at that. We're interested in two and three. We are interested in two and three. So let's see what happens at that point. You can see clearly that our line flattens out. Our gradient goes to zero. Our reaction is completed. It is no longer taking place. So that's what happens between t is equals to 2 and t is equals to 3 minutes. Actually, here on the x-axis, it's actually not seconds, but minutes, right? 5.3.3. So in 5.3.3, uh, the question is saying, in a second experiment, the concentration of the hydrochloric acid changed from 0 0.5 to 1 mole per decimeter cube. Draw a new curve on the same graph paper to show what effect it will have level the new curve x so the concentration of hydrochloric acid has now increased uh, from 0 0.25 to 1 mole per decimeter cube so we would expect the rate of reaction to increase the graph the new graph that we are supposed to get should have a steeper gradient versus the graph we have already right so we expecting something like this it should have a steeper gradient and it should reach completion before our initial graph so that's what we're supposed to have if your graph is below your initial graph then that is totally wrong you are saying that the rate of reaction is now decreased which is not the case right uh, the last question 5.3.4 assume that uh, the molar gas volume at 25 degrees celsius is 24.47 decimeter cube per mole calculate the volume of acid that was used in the first experiment when the reaction was completed so in the first experiment we have a volume at the end of our reaction which is 35 centimeter cube of h2 right so let me just copy again let me just copy down that equation again so we have mg 
plus what plus QHCl and we get MgCl2 plus H2. At the end of our reaction, we have some volume of H2, which is 35 centimeter cube. And we are also given the molar gas volume. So we can use that information to find the number of moles of H2. And then from the number of moles of H2, we can find the number of moles of HCl using the balancing coefficient. The concentration initially is given to us as 0.2 moles per decimeter cube. So it should be easy to actually find the volume like we are asked to do. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so for H2, we're saying that the number of moles is equal to the volume divided by the molar gas volume. So that will be equal to... So the SI unit for our molar gas volume is in decimeter cube. So we have to convert the volume of H2 to decimeter cube. That will give us 35 divided by 1000. And then everything divided by 24.47. Now it is just a matter of putting that in a calculator to get 1.43 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Right. So now balancing coefficient, the number of moles of H2 divided by the number of moles of HCl is equal to 1 divided by 2. So the number of moles of HCl will be equals to the number of moles of H2 multiplied by 2. And if we do that, we're going to get 2.86 times 10 to the minus 3 moles as the number of moles of HCl. And the last step, concentration, is number of moles divided by the volume. So the volume will be equals to the number of moles divided by the concentration. The number of moles is 2.86 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration is 0 0.25. That is 0 0.011 decimeter cube.